All right. If you have your Bibles close at hand, please turn with me to Ephesians chapter number four. Thank you, Mary Lou, for playing for us today. Appreciate that. I love that last time you played. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. All right. Ephesians chapter number four. We're going to be looking at verses 17 through 25 of Ephesians chapter four. When you find your place there, please stand if you're able for the reading of God's word. Ephesians chapter 4, 17 through 25. All right, verse number 17. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, and the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance of that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard Him and have been taught by Him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of Another, the specific, that I, the specific verse that we're going to focus on today really is verse number 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on our time together. Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word. Through it, it is powerful. It is you that has breathed into it existence being using that of holy men. And we ask you specifically to help us to know you better. Help us to fulfill your will for our lives and to know the height and the depth and the breadth of your love that it might grow in us more and more one to another. And not just one to another, but to those that we know that need Christ, that need to know that there is life after death that need to know that there is a way to get right with God, and there's only one way to get it right with, with, with you, O oh God, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask you to help me as I speak, help all of our hearts to be open to what the Spirit says to the church. And Father, we ask you to go before us and to minister to our hearts and minds in only the way that you can. Father, we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to ask you a question just to think about. Don't answer out loud. Don't answer very quickly. It is a controversial question. Are you ready? No one's ready. All right. (laughs) It's a controversial question that I'm going to ask. Is, okay, is... Lying always wrong. Now, don't answer. Don't answer. Because it is highly debated among Christian circles. Why is that? Well, let me give you a for instance. For instance, uh, this is a true story about two uh, sisters. One name is Corey. One name is, uh, oh, I forgot the other one. Becky? I think. Okay. So, we have two sisters. One... And they're both in the Netherlands when World War II has just broken out. Now they are under control of Nazi Germany. Corrie ten Boom had the thought about, okay, if they ask me if I am hiding any Jews, or if they ask me any question that I need to lie about in order to protect those that are under my care, I'm going to lie. And so she did. And uh, one specific instance, she had to turn in 
all the radios. They were trying to control all the communication that was going into the Netherlands. And so she brought uh, forward her, her radio and they asked her the question, do you have another radio in your house? The answer that is actually truthful was yes. They just hit it. But she said no. And she said later in, in her book that she wrote, it wasn't the fact that I lied that astonished me about how easy it was to lie. So she had the conviction of, okay, if I lie, then I'm going to save the lives of those under my care, the Jewish people, the God's chosen people. Now, you get her sister on the other end. She had the conviction, I am not going to lie at all. Because God hates lying, I am not going to lie. And God's going to take care of it. And so, they came to the door. There was uh, a Jewish family that was in a trap door underneath their kitchen table that they had gone into because they knew the Germans were coming in. And so they, they eventually hid back down there. Uh, underneath the kitchen table. And so the German soldiers looked at uh, Corey's sister and said, Do, are you hiding any Jews? And she said, yes, they're underneath the table. And so as they were about to look underneath the table, the Lord gave her the silly willies and that she laughed hysterically at them. And so they went off in a huff, not actually looking underneath the table, thinking that she is just making fun of what we're trying to do. And so they left off in a huff and they didn't actually check. Another time that specifically Corey came back to the house and her sister said, I have to tell you what just happened. The Germans came into our home. They asked me if there were any Jews. I, I'm going to be truthful, so I said yes. And they were found, and they were captured, and now they are going to go to a concentration camp in the morning. But God is going to make a way of escape for them. I have no doubt. Later that night, unbeknownst to either one of the ladies... There was a person that came into the area that those Jews were being held and broke them out and led them to safety. So an amazing thing. So some people, some Christians would say, well, okay, it is okay to lie if you're under distress. If you're under this notion of that you're going to cause life to be expunged, uh, then you should lie. Okay? That's one idea. The idea with that is that, okay, the authority has broken its, its, its uh, divine rule over the people, and so with that, we no longer are obligated in order to follow those precepts to the government. That's one way to look at it. But I go more towards the other way. Betsy, that's her name. Betsy had it and said, I am not going to tell a lie. I'm going to tell the truth. And God is the one that will have to do what he does, does best. Because God is truth. He is no lie. So, understand this. Now, the question is, okay, which idea is more biblical? I will have to say, according to our text, putting off all lying, speak truth one to another. Nowhere in Scripture do I ever see God saying yes to lying. Okay? Now, there's some rare occasions that you, you see that they lied, and, and God, it seemed like, blessed them for it. That of Rahab, when she hid the, the spies and said, oh, they went out some other way. Well, she's just kind of a, like a new believer, so I kind of give her some, some credit with that. Uh, otherwise, there's a, another story about uh, two hand, uh, midwives that they said, okay, uh, they, we were ordered to uh, destroy, kill the babies that come out of a certain, certain gender. What should we do? Well, I don't think they lied about that. Because their actual excuse is, well, here's the problem that we have with the Hebrew women. They're not like Egyptian women. They, <laughs> let me use my own uh, colloquialism, uh, my own way of speaking, uh, they pop out kids at a rapid pace and we ha don't have the ability to do what you have commanded us to do. And so in that, I don't think they actually lied. I think they, they might have been a little more uh, 
slow to come to the door of the mit of the person that was giving birth. But in all reality, I don't think they actually lied. But yeah, God blessed them over and over again. But there's more occasion for us to know and understand that God blesses those who speak the truth. And so specifically, the Apostle Paul here in Ephesians chapter number 4 is talking about what we should be like if we are a new creation in Christ, therefore putting off the old man, we're putting on the new man in Christ. And so specifically, we should act like Jesus Christ. So notice with me, we're going to look at this a little bit more in detail as to the idea of truth. What is truth is my first question that I'm going to ask and answer for us, all of us to ponder, all of us to understand more and more. So what is truth? It's subjective. One portion of truth is subjective. What I mean by that it is about the individual and their opinion. So truth in one sense is subjective of personal opinion possibly temporary. For instance, I'll ask you I'll, I'll ask myself the question, what is your favorite type of food? What is your favorite food to eat? And you all will answer for me. Pizza. That's right, pizza. And so for those who don't know, I love and enjoy pizza and uh, I have only met one type of pizza that I said I will never eat again because I hated it so much. Um, it was just the crust. It was just, no, wrong texture whatsoever for pizza. Anyway, uh, so there's only one. So basically, if you give me some pizza, I'll, I'll eat it. Don't worry about that. I'll eat it. Now, question. Is that true? Well, right now, yeah, I love pizza. At this point in time, my opinion, my favorite kind of food as of this point in time right now on September 8th, 2024, it is pizza. Now, tomorrow, could it be something else? <laughs> okay, yeah, you know me too well. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm not saying it will be, but uh, it could be something else. It could be Sloppy Joe's. I'm not really sure why I would pick that over pizza, but there's a possibility. So if it was, okay, let's, let's, let's uh, fast forward time a little bit. Ten years from right now, if you ask me what my favorite kind of food is, I would say tacos. Okay, just throwing that out there. I probably won't, but who knows? Now, could that be true at that point in time? Yeah, very much so. Why does it change? Well, I'm human. I'm, I'm prone to change. I, I have this opinion that it's mine. Okay, this is my favorite food. Now, this is truth subjectively. Now, each and every one of us understands that, but in all reality, the things that have the most weight are not this kind of truth. This kind of truth is, okay, the very bare minimum of, okay, this is just our existence. This is just uh, what we like, our, our desires. Uh, like, for instance, many people make doctrines out of, for churches about exactly what we ought to do with the traditions that we have been passed down from generation to generation. Now, is any of those things bad? Well, no, not necessarily. Now, if you do it just because, like, for instance, the Lord's Prayer, some people will refuse to do the Lord's Prayer if we say, Our Father who art in heaven, how would be thy name, and so on and so forth. Some of us would say, No, 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 that's Catholic. We're not Catholic, therefore we won't do that. Well, is it wrong to do that? Is it wrong to do the Lord's Prayer? Well, obviously not. Is it right to do the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Now, understand this. Could it be that we do something, that we do all because of tra tradition, that is right, that could be wrong? I'll say this a different way. What we do, could we do it in such a way that it loses the reality behind it. Like, for instance, we, we worship today with the different hymns, uh, On This Solid Rock I Stand. Yes, I love that, song, that hymn. A uh, wonderful hymn, Jesus on this solid rock I stand. No other ground, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. He's the only one that we can stand firm on. Now, if we sing it like, On Christ the solid rock I stand. I wonder what we're having for lunch. 
I wonder what, uh, what's going on in the baseball game. I wonder, what, well, I wonder who's going to win today on this. And you're still singing, you're, but you're thinking to yourself something entirely different. Now, are we doing what is right? We're doing and singing, at least. That's one thing. But actually, are we actually worshiping? In truth, no. So understand this, that subjective truth is there. But a lot of times, the traditions of men, we tempt at times say, oh, it has to be done this way. Well, not really. You find a you know, Bible verse about it, then we'll talk. But in all reality, some of the things that we do, like for instance, we have three hymns and the message right after that. Now, anything with having just two songs? No. Is there anything wrong with having 50 songs and then the message? How quick are those songs? I want to ask. Uh, no, not, not really. It's just my opinion about the leader that's actually leading it. So, subjective truth. Now, what is truth? The objective truth. This is more important. This, um, let me go ahead and just say it, it's universal. It's divinely given. It's eternal. And so specifically, we have a lot of different uh, things that we could say is the truth throughout Scripture. In Exodus chapter 34, verse number 6, when God passes by Moses, he proclaims, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, and notice this, abundant in goodness and truth. Also, it says in Psalm 91, I actually just read this in my devotions this morning, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. This is talking about the relationship of Israel to the Lord, that they are his people, and he's going to protect them as an a eagle with her, her chicks. And so, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. That means you are protected if you have the Word of God. The truth that is the Word of God. Also, it says in John chapter 14, verse number 6, the wonderful phrase that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He is the truth. Him being part of the Godhead. We see in John chapter 14, verse 17, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit specifically being truth. Now, does God ever change? Malachi, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, does God change? No. Not at all. In order, in order for God to change and become better, he has to have some lacking in him. He's perfect. There's no lacking whatsoever in who God is. So therefore, he cannot change because he cannot become better. He cannot become worse. He is who he is forever will be perfect. So, he is the truth. But then, I love what Jesus says in the high priestly prayer, John chapter 17, verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. We see this as objective reality. The objective truth is God's word. And specifically, it's something that is eternal, something that doesn't change, something that we can hold our head to and, and say this is definitively the Word of God. I believe it. I trust it. Huh. Hopefully we do it. Um, think about that. The truth. So if that is the truth, and it says here in Ephesians chapter number 4, specifically in verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. What should we be speaking to Speaking about to our neighbor, well, specifically, if we want to be really technical, we talk about God. We talk about His Word. Now, true enough, we get to the subjective of, okay, is this right to you, specifically? Opinion? Okay, not really important. But if you lie about it, that's kind of an odd thing to lie about. Like if I say my favorite food is, uh, right now it is liverwurst. Why would I ever say that in my life? I've never had 
liver worst. It sounds like the worst. Anyway, I <laughs> understand this. If I legitimately lie about it, what good would that do? So we know what truth is and who the truth is, and so that it, it does not change whatsoever. His word does not change whatsoever. And so what we ought to do, if we're at variance against the word of God or against God himself, which is both are connected, then we need to change, not the word of God needs to change. That's a weird thing that's going on today. Like, okay, I don't want to change. I must be right, so therefore if I read the Bible and it disagrees with how I'm living, then the Bible needs to change. Well, it doesn't really mean that. It doesn't really mean that. Although that's, that's, that it's telling me that I'm, I'm a sinner. No, 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 no. That must have a different meaning to it. So they read into the Word of God what their own meaning is for the text itself and not let the text just talk about what it says. So for us, we need to go to the Word of God and understand this is truth. No matter what, what man may say, no matter what so-called science proves and let me, let me just say this. Science doesn't prove anything. Scientists try to prove their own worldview by what they do. It's a, a, a logical fallacy. Anyway, uh, so first we see what truth is. Number two, what is lying then? So we have a definition. It is something you say that you know is not true. It is something that you say that you know is not true. All okay. right, here is the time for confession. All right, we're not Catholic, so we're not really doing confession, confession. But uh, here's my confession. The first sin I ever committed that I remember is this thing called lying. I remember it clear as day. I was probably, let's see, I was probably in kindergarten, so I was probably five, and we went to a babysitter uh, for uh, the, the day or whatever, and she asked me the question, this is right after school, uh, asked me the question, so what'd you do at school? And so I didn't really know what to say, and so I just made up something that sounded plausible, though it didn't really happen. Now, is that lying? If I don't preface it, I'm making up a story. It reminds me of uh, one of the, the uh, Dr. Seuss books, the, actually the first one that he ever wrote, is about this kid talking to his father, and his father asked him the same question every time. All right, so what did you see on your way back home from school? And his answer just about every time is, well, I saw a horse uh, with a carriage that it was pulling. And he said, that's not very exciting. So the boy's like, nah, I want something a little more pizzazz. Okay, the, the horse is not really a horse, it's, it's really an elephant. And the, uh, the, uh, the carriage is not really a carriage, it's a chariot. And he's having a chariot race. And then he goes on from there and, and has all these different people. Like, uh, you got jugglers over here, you got, you got politicians, you know, saying good things about him. And, and you know, you got all these different things, balloons going up and, and other animals going around. And he's just making up the story in his head and, and all of that. And then he then says to his dad when his dad asks him the question, so what did you see today coming home from school? I saw a horse carrying a carriage. But would it be wrong for him to say, well, I imagined all of this, which it sounds really cool, but in all reality, I only saw a horse and a carriage. Now, anything wrong with that? No. Because of the fact that you are making and telling the person, this part is made up, entirely made up but this is actually what I saw. And so it gives the understanding of what truth is and what lying is. So if it's something that we say that is untrue, it's in order for the other person to believe what we have just said is the truth. So if I decide to rob a bank after church today, which uh, you'll say, yeah, right, <laughs> banks, they're not open today. Uh, but <laughs> if I decide to rob a bank today and, and I get away with it and uh, I come to church tonight and I preach a sermon on thou shalt not steal, and uh, I know that uh, that's very hypocritical of me, but, uh, but then I'll say, yeah, I have done nothing wrong whatsoever. Then when it's found out in the news that I've been arrested, uh, and I'm going to jail for a long period of time, you would say, well, he was not speaking the truth. 
he was speaking a lie, and that makes me a liar. Absolutely. So understand this. When the Apostle Paul says in Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 25, Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. What ought we to do? Well, we shouldn't be speaking lies to each other. We should be, and understand this, God is love. Specifically, we see that through who Christ is. And is it love to tell a lie to a person that we love? No. Now, to say to a loved one something that is a roundabout lie, then we are not loving our neighbor as we do ourselves. And so we ought not to uh, speak lies to each other, but rather the truth. So the question for us today is how do we make sure we speak the truth? Now, number one, first of all, speak God's truth, number one, to yourself. Speak God's truth to yourself. Understand this. Every day, I, I really hope and pray that each and every one of you get into the Word of God. There's nothing like it in all the world. You know, you think about all the great classics in literature, all the, all the great things you could be learning about and reading on. There's nothing better than the Bible. It's the only thing that God has given His seal of approval of. This is my Word. So if, okay, let, let me... Let me add, give you a little illustration if you somehow for whatever reason were up in an attic now like for instance a loved one uh you know it invited you to over their house you went up to the attic and you found a treasure map oh it looks pretty legitimate and and you think okay well x marks the spot so you go and 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 you're looking at it and you're examining it and you're making sure that you, there's nothing that is not there that, that you can see in order for to prevent you from getting the treasure uh, so okay so it must be right here and and all that and you'll be studying that very closely if you knew at the end of that was a 10 million dollar paycheck You'd be studying that very closely. Mm, okay, let's see. Right there, right there. I have to dig right here. Right here. Not right here, but okay. Understand this. The Word of God is much better than $10 million paycheck. And we ought to study it. We ought to learn more about it. We should learn more of who God is. Because guess what? If you're in Christ today, then you have an ongoing relationship with Him. Now, we, we uh, do things to hurt the relationship. We lose our fellowship with God if we, if we sin. And he says, if, if, you're, if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So you restore that relationship once that is done. And then we should walk in the truth. So understand this. Speak the word, the truth to yourself. Sometimes I really, uh, I really liked preaching when I was, um, when I was learning in, uh, in college. And specifically, there's points in time where my preaching, uh, it wasn't as good as what it could be. And then it dawned on me what I needed to do is I needed to just preach to myself. And so in all reality, that is the usual way I go about uh, forming sermons is I just preach to myself. And okay, I write down what, uh, what the Lord has for me and so there I'm, you could see on, in, in the uh, eatery in the kitchen, I'm, I'm going away at uh, frying things. I'm frying chicken, I'm frying uh, french fries, I'm frying all sorts of stuff. But in reality, I'm not really frying in my head right now. At that point in time, I'm speaking the truth, God's word that I just learned that morning uh, to myself and the preaching that to myself when I was working in the kitchen. So it's an amazing thing. Read God's Word. The Bible says over and over for us to meditate therein day and night. Why is that? We shall be like a tree planted by a river of waters that our, our leaf will not turn any color but green. We shall have our fruit in its due season if we meditate in God's Word and take that seriously. How do you do that? Well, first thing is first. You get along with God and you pray. 
open God's Word. Now, we usually say systematically go through a book, not just, okay, flip here, flip here, flip here. You know, it's not uh, Bible study roulette. You know, you just, okay, okay, that's a good verse. You know, pick, up, pick out a book of the Bible and pray before you read and read it and read it slowly. Slowly and ask questions about the text. Ask questions about the intricacies of what you're reading. Why does this person do this thing? Is there a problem in his life? Is there a problem in my life? Okay, why does Paul say this when he's talking to Christians? Well, there's a problem here. Is there a problem here? So, and understand this. We need to be about the Word of God each and every day. Guess what? The more and more the Bible gets into your heart and mind, the better off we are as Christians. And that is without a, any, any, uh, any thoughts against anything else. But it, we have to get the Word of God in our hearts and in our mind. Speak God's truth to yourself, knowing what truth is. Number two, be truthful to yourself. Be truthful to yourself. That goes along with understanding what the Bible says. Okay, it says, do not lie. Now, you have to be truthful for yourself. Did I lie in this conversation I just had? Yes, I did. What should you do about that? Go back to the person and say, I'm sorry, I lied in this situation. I lied in this conversation. Can you forgive me? Be truthful to yourself. That's God's Spirit working in your life to show you your sin and for you to confess it before God. But sometimes we have to confess it to others. If we have not been truthful in whoever it might be in our life, we need to be truthful. It reminds me of a, uh, a student friend that I had back in college. He, uh, we have these, uh, these quizzes in PE. I hated PE. Uh, one, one. I'm, I'm, I'm working off, um, working on the bitterness I have towards my college because they changed the degree requirements. In that now for pastoral ministries for Pensacola Christian College, you don't have to have any PE. Oh, <laughs> my GP, GPA would have been a lot better without that. So, um, but we had our uh, occasional quiz, and at the end of the occasional quiz, you had to write down yes or no. Did you run this week? You had to run a mile this week, some point in time. Yes or no. And it was about honor the truthfulness of the person. Well, a friend of mine, he wrote down yes when he knew. No, that wasn't true. And so he asked a counselor, what should I do? I feel guilty about saying no to the thing when it's actually, or saying yes to it when it's actually a no. What should I do? Go tell the teacher. Hmm, anything else I could do? Uh, <laughs> no, he went to the teacher, he confessed, I wrote a yes, and it's actually a no. And I just want to let you know about that. And the teacher said, I appreciate your honesty. Uh, you are going to be docked one letter grade because you lied. But it's better to be that way than to hold on to that guilt of doing wrong and knowing that your grade is a sham. When it, even if it's an A. It's better to be truthful in those situations. In every situation, be truthful. And so understand that that could co come at a cost. You could be saying, well, the Lord's really convicted me about this conversation I had with my boss, and, and now I have to actually go and make it right. What if he fires me? Leave that with God. If the Lord's convicting you about saying something that you ought not to have, if you have lied to somebody and you need to make it right, and the Holy Spirit's convicting you about that, trust Him and by faith do what He wants you to do. Be truthful to yourself, and I will say, and to others. Last but not least, number three, avoid temptation to lie by dedicating yourself to the God of all truth. To dedicate to yourself saying, well, I have lied in the past, but from this point forward, I am going to speak the truth. Now, here's a caveat. 
here's a, a little parenthesis. How should we speak the truth? In love. It says this in the beginning part of Ephesians chapter number 4. Speak the truth in love. We have an amazing amount of people in the world today that are either A, all about the love and not about the truth, or B, all about the truth and not about the love. We see that in a lot of different uh, uh, people that we know. They're about the truth. and that's, This is what the truth is. I'm going to tell them the truth. Well, could you tell them the truth in a way that uh, is wrong? Yeah. If love is not there and you speak the truth, the possibility you might cause more damage than what you're intended to. So always speak the truth, but speak the truth in love. But avoid the temptation to, to lie by saying, I am going to speak the truth and I'm going to get right with those who I've lied to in the past. And so, and also that of confessing to God the fact of your lie. Now, let me ask you this question. How many times does a person lie in a lifetime? That's a lot, right? If you lied one time a day for the entirety of your lifetime of 80 years, you would have lied thousands of times. Question, how many times for you to lie... That to make it so that you can't go to heaven. One time. You have to be perfect to go to heaven. Understand this, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So understand this. If you have never trusted Jesus as your own personal Savior, you need to do so. That wage of sin. It's on every single one that's born into this world. We're born into this world sinners because Adam and Eve back in the garden, they fell under that temptation and they fell into sin and caused death over all of the world. Understand this. If we died today without Christ, we would go to a place of eternal punishment. And that is what we deserve. If you try to do your best, to, to do all the good works in order to expunge that that. Sin, and hopefully it just balances out that, that you do more good than you do evil. No, no, that's not the way to do it at all. Our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And so God knew our predicament, and God sent his own son into this world on a rescue mission. Jesus Christ came into the world. He put on flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And with Him, He did everything to please the Father, fulfilled all that the Father commanded Him to do, and then became obedient even to death, even the death on the cross. Because of the cross, we can have much rejoicing. Because of the cross, we can have eternal life. Because of the cross, we have the fact that He paid for our sin debt in full. No longer do we have to do anything uh, in order to earn our way to heaven, which never works ever at all. Even if you do all the sacrifices, the Old Testament says, it will not actually expunge the sin. It only covers it because Christ is the only one that can to offer Himself a payment, a ransom for our sins. And by His stripes, we are healed. If you have put your faith in Jesus Christ, you have the gift of eternal life. But yet, if you haven't, you have nothing to look forward to. You might not make it out the rest of this day. Trust Christ today. Now for us, understand that He, he died on the cross, but on the third day He rose again, proving who He claimed to be. And now because that, those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ, guess what He gives to us? That power of the resurrection. Now we have a new nature. Now we are a new creature, a new creation in Christ. We are now different from what we were before. And so we ought to live in the difference. In Ephesians it says, put, laying off, putting aside, casting away, lying, let every man speak truth to his neighbor. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm going to ask for Mary Lou to come to the piano. And she's going to play through a song. 
what we usually do is we have a time of prayer that between us and God, and we, we do that during this time. So I'm going to start us off. We'll pray silently there in our seats, and then I'll finish us up. Father, we thank you so much for this day you have given us. We rejoice in what your word says. May your conviction of your Holy Spirit be upon us who, if we have an issue, if we have lied, and you want us to make it right, may you give us that conviction. May you work in our hearts. May we at least dedicate ourselves to, to be the truth, to say the truth. May you bless this time, I do pray.